making a fly cutter for a drill press with a number 3 Morris taper. In previous videos I've machined using a taper attachment on a standard lathe, so I decided I'd do something a little bit different this time. I machined the number 3 Morris taper and part of the body on a CNC machine. If there's enough interest I will post the CNC program in one of the links below. I've also decided to use some different machining techniques and different setup techniques that I have in previous videos. Because I'm considering this not to be a super accurate tool, I decided to use fast setups. Please take a moment to like and subscribe. It's free and it'll help me out. Okay, let's get started right now. This is our original stock and this here is the piece that we're machining. This is going to be a fly cutter for a drill press. A number three Morris taper. I already have the standout at six inches. Okay, so here's our checking gauge for the number three Morris taper. I put this guy in and it is, it is like perfect. So ideally I was going to grind this, but now with the surface being almost as good as we can get a ground surface, I'm a little hesitant to even bother grinding it. I think it's going to be just fine as it is, but we'll see. What I do now is put the neck on the front. internal taper, number three internal taper, to hold our number three tool holders. I milled two flats equal about center on the Morris taper gauge. Okay, let's recap the project so far. So basically we've turned this shape on the CNC. We've also turned around and bored out a number three Morris taper hole in here so that we can mount this together. Locks in nice and solid. So what I wanna do now is I wanna fit these tool bits inside of here. I wanna basically make this the same as this. This is the angle that I'm going to use. Okay, you may have noticed that I only used a square to set up the vise. This is going to be a relatively inaccurate setup. So if I'm out a couple of degrees, it won't matter. So this square is good enough for what I need to do for my job. Or this square is good enough to accomplish the accuracy that I want in my part. Okay, so this is the angle that I want to set this on. So I'm going to set this guy up here, set this flat on the bottom of the vise, and that will align my angle. I'm going to machine the top first, then I'm going to machine my grooves on the inside.
I'm going to do next is I'm going to remove this section here and I'm going to remove this section here so that it comes out basically identical to this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave point, uh, 0.375 here. Then I'm going to make a point, point 0.38 channel, which is clearance for this tool here. This thickness from here to here, I'm just going to leave it so it looks like a good number. But from the back side of the wall here to the outside edge is going to be point, point 0.745. Okay, for setting this up, I'm going to cheat a little bit. I could easily indicate the vise or indicate this piece here and find the center and then move over a certain amount one way or the other. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to mill this slot in here first. And then with the edge of my cutter here, I'm going to identify the edge here by measuring across here. Okay, so what I did there is I just touched off a piece of paper. I'm going to zero my z-axis out, and I'm going to lift up three eighths of an inch. Okay, this is what we have so far. The slot in the back, the slot in the front. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pull this actually out of the vise. Still held into our jig quite well. Remember the square method that we talked about earlier? Now I'm going to offset the vise the same amount with this angle parallel. So I'm going to want to set this down like this. So I'm going to have to tilt it this way to get this act this flat running parallel with my y-axis. Normally I would do this on the other side of the vise because I'm right-handed, but you won't be able to see it in the video if I do it on the right hand on the other side of the vise. So I'm going to take this guy, wedge it in there, I'm going to take my square and rotate the vise until this guy lines up flat. That way I will be able to draw a line perfectly perpendicular and tap my holes in here just the way I want to tap them. Okay, so what I did here is I want this axis to be perfectly true with my Y axis of the machine. So originally, I tilted the block using this angled parallel. So now I'm gonna use this down here, set this up against there and then set this angle so that it'll be perfectly perpendicular to my Y. I dislike these chucks because the uh, taps keep slipping in them. So what I'll have to do is start the tap and then finish the tap by hand afterwards. I like the one with the thumb screw in it. 
consider having to drop this guy down, but you got what you got. Now, if you've watched my edge finding videos, there's a burr right here that I haven't cleaned up. If I pick up off this edge, I'll actually be picking up off the burr and not actually on that edge. That's why I don't like these chucks. Now there are wrenches, pin wrenches that you can put in here, but we don't keep them out for the seat. Go over my hundred thou. Now I can't really do this in the Y. So I'm gonna say I have approximately, I'm gonna say an inch and a quarter. It's not, but I'm gonna say approximately an inch and a quarter and I'm gonna go from that corner, I'm gonna put one in the center of an inch and a quarter, which is gonna be five, five eighths. And then I'm gonna move over, I'm gonna move over probably three eighths and then another three eighths, because I wanna put three top holes in here. This next operation is a little hard to see, so I took out the edge finder, flipped it around to the pointed end, and picked up the edge. So just as an approximate, I'm going to use the pointed end. Stop it from moving. Down. I gotta block the view. Say right about there. Just zero that out. Oops, zero that guy out. You move into the center, which is going to be five eighths. I said. Then I'm gonna move three sixteenths in, which is gonna be point one eight seven five. Uh oh, something's going on with the reader. So what I'm going to do to save me from doing math, I'm going to zero out my Y axis. Call that zero, then I'm going to go positive, I'm going to go negative. I also set my depth stop so that all of my center drill depths are the same. I'm going to go a little bit more. Then I'm going to move a quarter inch away or three, three eighths away. Let's see what 375 looks like. Okay, number seven drill is what I'm going to use to tap my quarter 20 holes. Okay, so I'm going to have to bottom tap these screws here a little bit to make sure they went all the way through. Deburr this piece, and we should be good to go. But what I want to do is remove this piece. I could hit this with a hammer, but I'm just going to bump it against the table to pop it up. Okay, maybe not. Okay, I tried knocking this against the table to knock it out. It shouldn't take much. That's how good this taper actually is. I'm just gonna tap on the back. 
to pull it out. Not bad. We have to remember to deburr everything. Oh, almost. Okay, now that this job's basically done, I'm just putting the set screws in. Now, I can use carbide or I can use high-speed steel. So I'm probably gonna end up using high-speed steel because what I'm gonna be cutting with this is going to be aluminum or plastic. I don't really want to cut a lot of steel on a drill press. I'm glad that you enjoyed the video. If you have any thoughts or ideas for videos, or if you want to know how to machine something, leave them in the comments below. Maybe I'll make a video on it. If you want to see other great videos on machining and math, check out my YouTube channel, Shop in Math. Also, if you have a moment, please like and subscribe. It's free and it'll help me out. All you have to do is click on the icon on my face and I'll do the rest. Have a great night and thanks for watching.